Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Uh, just back from uh, East Coast trip. Had a great trip. And actually, I had a, I have a video to show on a Resto Mod 65 Thunderbird with a 500 cubic inch Cadillac engine in it. It's just short clips of the car. It was at my brother's shop while I was in Nova Scotia. And I just thought maybe it would be worth showing around. It's a pretty nice looking car. It's just an older restoration on it, but uh, it's a cool car just the same. It works really well with the 500 uh, cubic inch Cadillac engine. But anyway, right now, uh, before I went on ho uh, holidays with that hardtop Thunderbird that I have, the hood hinge, rear hood hinge bent. And I'm going to spin you around and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, here we are. So these are, it bent, so then I couldn't close the trunk lid, so I had to take the hinge off and the torsion bars. I'll go over and show you what I'm talking about, the torsion, torsion rods. So just give me a second, we'll go over and uh, look at it. And then I'll come back to this and explain what's going on here. All right, so I had to take the torsion rods out. So by doing that, I just used a pair of vice grips. So actually, it says in the book on how to do it. You put a, a pair of vice grips on the tail end of these to control them and then pull them out and let them go back. It takes a little bit of strength, uh, but it's uh, not that big of a job. So one tension on each side. So those are the torsion rods. And they will go up in the... You see those little notches, that's where the torsion rod goes, and there's a slot up there, that's where the, the end for the trunk, right there, that loop, that's how the uh, trunk hinge uh, works. And I'll show you on the one I have out what I'm talking about. All right, back over to the vise with the uh, left-hand trunk hinge. Here's these torsion slots. Uh, this car was set on the first slot, the very bottom slot. Uh, so I think that was, anyway, whichever one is the bottom when it's up, when the hinge is up the right way. So what's going on is, by bending this, by forcing down on this, and it was catching when I got it, but I, I did the damage here, no one else, just me. And forcing down on this, it causes these sides to pull in. It has to pull something, either sw shift them outward or pull them in in order for the hinge to bend. So what I'm going to do... The plan is I'm going to spread that back out with my porta power, the little jaws in there. And then what I'm going to do, I am going to cap this, oh, the mosquito. I'm going to cap this along here with a piece of 16 gauge right along as far as I can get without interfering with this piece. Because this is the piece that goes in the torsion, that loopy end, the loopy part of the torsion rod on each side. So the torsion rod for this is tightened on the passenger side and the, the loop in it is on the uh, driver side. And they go up in there and then because they're in the right position they just they just bend over by pushing the torsion rod back and forth. But this won't do it because now that this piece is in the wrong spot and it's binding. So what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to spread this spread this area and then I'm going to cap it with 16 gauge to hold it from uh, from spreading again. So if I cap it all the way out to about here, it's probably good enough. That'll hold all that section from being able to go either way. It'll be like a tube now. All right, so I'm gonna get set up to do that, and I'll show you how the spreading goes with the porter pack. Let's see if we can get this to spread. All right. Tighten it up, there we go. If this works, this is a good way of doing it. If it doesn't work, well, it's not a good way of doing it. Oh, my vice is, my rig is moving in my vice. There we go. All right. I may have to I'm going to try it a little more. That stuff is tight. Tight, tight, tight. How's she coming? Now she's coming out. She's spreading. If I have to tap it back in some, I can do that. That's easier than spreading it. All right, I got her uh, starting to straighten it out. 
After the porter pack, I put it on my, uh, my metal heavy bench here, clamped it down, and then I put a piece of flat bar under one side of it, um, the opposite side, then I used the ball peen hammer and a piece of steel to just try to straighten this out. This upper lip, right here. I know it might be hard to see because the light's coming in from the front door. And then I use vice grips just to kind of, you know, manipulate it to look, look a little better. Like so. So you can get it pretty, pretty straight. There, I got it as straight as I need it, I think. So now I can cap this, like I was saying, out to about here, from about there. And that'll bridge this all together and keep it stiff. So let's uh, do well the dug out and a piece of 16 gauge. Let's see if I can find a nice piece that fits there. All right, there she is all boxed in. I'll grind that up a little bit, make it look pretty, give it a coat of paint. I'll probably just use uh, silver paint. I have some. This is hidden mostly underneath the car anyway. But that should stiffen that up quite, quite a little bit. If not, well, I'll have to put another hinge on. Nothing ventured, no, nothing gained. So let me get her ground up, and uh, I'll let it cool down first, and I'll get it ground up, and then I'll uh, paint it up. She's all boxed in. I just give it a quick rub down with a grinding wheel. Again, this is not very visible. It's underneath. This hinge flips over. This will be at the bottom. All right, so I'm going to get her put on the car, and we'll see how it works. All right, I welded up the back side of the hinge. And I put it into the car and it still was binding on this mechanism right here. This was binding on the uh, torsion bar. So I noticed up here was worn in quite a bit. So I put some weld in and gave it a little bit of grind with a die grinder. Same on this side. So now I got to bend this tab back down. Now I'm going to put it back in the car and see if that helped bring the torsion spring forward farther. And it doesn't bind on it. We'll soon see. Have been talking so all right i just placed the torsion rods in and they kind of have to go in together and what this one this one goes ahead of the hoop part on the back i don't know if you can see it or not the same on both sides so you need to get them up in there so they can i don't know if i can see see the camera for a second in that light you want to turn that light on so all right just the light right there so yeah, so this one here will have to go up in behind that. I'm trying, I can't really see what I'm doing because I have a light and everything in my way. But anyway, it goes up in behind this, into this loop. So it clips up in there. And then there's these little, it's so hard to see things. There's that little arm. I can't touch anything, I can't see anything. I don't know what I'm doing. And that hooks on the... This hooks up, this little arm that has the slot in it hooks on the bottom of that hoop. And you can turn them back and drop that arm down like this. And then grab the other side of the torsion arm and you can pull it back up in place. Sort of like that. And then it has to go all on the side. <laughs> this is hard. I'm going to have to just show you after it's done because it's very hard to work in. Do it at the same time. Managed to get that side on the on the right side up. This rod for the left rod goes up in that spot. Up in here, there's a little hook. And on the left side, on, on the right side one, it's the same deal. This for the right side hinge rod 
you have to get up in this little spot and the rod runs behind for this. Now, now there's this piece right here. It has to go up and hook onto the bottom of that uh, looped piece. So you gotta kinda move it ahead. It should be snug, but this one's not so bad. So once you get that up in place, make sure it aligns with the slots and then you can grab the other other side and hold it down. So now you gotta pull these rods down. So I'm gonna pull down the the rod for the right side, but you do that on the left side. <laughs> if that makes sense. Because the rods cross over. So what the manual says, the repair manual from 1965, says put a pair of ice grips on the bottom and pull with all your little heart. So I'm just going to go to the first notch. Watch your fingers. There. That's on the first notch. And now we'll go to the other side. If Beverly wants to go on that side and show it. I don't know if she can see that yep. or not. I got it. So yank it out. Flip it up over. And then hook it in that first notch. That is how the book says to do it. So there you are. Let's see if that helped. Show me it. Got her? Show me the money. You're on? Yep. All right, so that did the trick. Filling those little uh, oblong spots in. Look at that. Oh, well, i got to adjust the trunk lid a little bit. <laughs> but anyway, it works. That fixed it right up. It's smooth as silk now. It's not clicking on it. So if you have one of these with the back of that that looped part is where that sits in those two sides and the upper part of the hinge if they get oblonged out you have to weld them in it stays up there too that's how you fix a set of hinges in my way of doing it anyway other people may have different ways thanks for watching we'll see you in the next one